five. Uh, just really quick as we do, let's let's look in uh, kind of the the sections of chapter five. One, you know, the first section five a the periodic table, periodic trends, and the properties of elements in the families. All right, so basically just understanding the different uh, terminology of the periodic table, uh, the periodic trends uh, from the periodic table, and their properties. All right. Just before we do, let's look at a quick review of some of the things that we were going over um, in Chapter 4. Right, We did uh, quantum numbers. And so this sheet, I'll post it, has a great image of the, the quantum numbers. So the first quantum number being N, right? That's your principal energy level. And you can see like as you go 4S, you move over into the D category. It goes 3D. And the same thing for 6S. Right here, you would have 4F coming after 6S, and technically it goes 6S2, 5D1, and then those come right here. This fits in right here. So 5, uh, 5D1, 4F14, and then 5D9, 6P6, 7S, and so forth. All right. So the first quantum number here, N, so if we were choosing this element right here, right, this is boron, just under boron. Um, I believe is aluminum, right? So you'd have aluminum, let's say right here. Aluminum would be in the 3P, so the first quantum number would be 3P up here, L being the azimuthal quantum number, is 1. So it would be 3, P is 1, so 3, 1, I'm talking about aluminum here, 3, 1, and then if you look up, the orbital is negative 1, so 3, 1, negative 1, and then it's in the first half so it is plus half. So 3, 1, negative 1, half. Those are the four quantum numbers for aluminum. All right. Now if we were to choose um, like chlorine, right? you would have 2, and then again P is 1. So 2, 1, 0, negative 1, half. All right? So make sure you're really familiar with that. Um, this is a good little chart that you could memorize and just make it quick and easy for any of the quantum numbers that you have to find. All right, um, here is the electron configuration, right? So this hydrogen would be 1s1, helium 1s2, um, what is it, beryllium 2s1, lithium 2s2, boron 2p1, right? And so this is the ending uh, of the electron configuration. So if you were going to do boron, you would have to say, uh, you know, 2s2, Sorry, sorry, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. And so then you'd have 2, 4, 5 electrons. All right? If you were going to choose aluminum, right, you'd have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. Okay? And so you can familiarize yourself with this chart as well. Um, hopefully it all just starting to come together uh, as we move forward you know in chapter five we're going to be learning about so when I when I mentioned the properties here's some basic properties of each of the different um, families like alkali metals alkali earth metals so that's the last thing we're going to talk about in this chapter okay uh, the one of the keys is the periodic trends okay so we're going to be talking about the periodic trends and here's a worksheet which I'll post where you can test your uh, your your knowledge of the trends and then you know explain why you chose the answer you did another periodic trends worksheet okay and I will also post chapter 5 the book if you wanted to read through it and understand the periodic table so the first thing we're going to talk about is the the uh, discovery of the periodic table and we're talking about Mendeleev and Mosley alright so let's jump into our lecture which of course I will post as well. All right. So when when the the periodic table came from understanding that elements had similarities, right? And so this uh, chemist Dmitri Mendeleev he arranged the elements by their increasing atomic masses, saying that as elements got heavier and heavier and heavier, right? Okay, uh, they changed in their properties. Okay. And so this was a huge step in, 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 in terms of organizing the periodic table. But the problems 
uh, with it where some elements had more uh, neutrons than others. Therefore, they might have a heavier mass, right? But, um, and so there was all these, these problems that, you know, arose because even though it technically shouldn't have the same property as something else, they might have the same mass. So two, two elements might have had different properties, but the same mass, and that was causing a problem. And so later on, uh, Henry Moseley, right, 100 years later or, or so, arranged the elements according to their atomic number, which is their protons, their number of protons. So it wasn't their mass, meaning their protons and neutrons together, but now he organized them simply from their protons. And what happened? Those problems disappeared, and now you had two elements, right, different, uh, even, even, even though they had the same atomic mass, they had different number of protons, and therefore uh, that explained the different properties. All right? So the periodic law, the modern periodic law, is that properties of an element vary with their atomic number in a systematic way. So the properties vary based upon their number of protons. Okay, so here's the periodic table of the elements. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, right? Those are all the number of protons of each element. So, um, you know, for 10, 50, right? And you have to understand that each letter is given the letter based upon its Greek, uh, sorry, sorry, its Latin name, okay? So when you see SN for 10, that's the Latin, the, is based upon the Latin name for 10. All right, very important to know. Understanding the periodic table, that big number is the atomic number, the symbol, the name, and the atomic mass. And we get the atomic mass based upon the average of all the, the element that we find in nature. So like if you took 100 hydrogen atoms and you, know, you took the mass of each of those, right? the average mass that you find would give you this atomic mass. So understanding how we discuss or talk about the periodic table. All right, so a column, right, we call this a family or even a group, okay? So there are, I believe, 18 groups in the periodic table, right? So meaning there's 18 columns, okay? But you also can call this a family, like the alkali earth metals, right? All right, moving forward. A row, we call this a period, right, or a series. And as we talked about before, right, there's seven rows or seven periods in the periodic table. All right, so groups 1A to 8A are the representative elements, meaning that each Roman numeral, each, you know, so 1A versus 2A tells you the number of valence electron. So all the elements in 2A have two valence electrons. All the elements in 4A have four valence electrons. And if we jump back to the periodic table, so this is 1A, 2A, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So carbon, all of these elements have four, four valence electrons. All of these elements have six valence electrons because they're in the group 6A. Now the B, right, when we talk about B, we're talking about the transition metals. There's 10 of these, okay, and these are the inner transition metals, right? The B are the transition elements, group 1A, sorry, 1B to 8B, right? These are all the transition elements. And now you can, when you look at the periodic table, you'll see that three of these rows are all the same group, okay? But these are groups 1 through 8B, okay? Um, metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. Metals are usually hard, shiny, malleable, ductile, good conductors of heat and electricity. These are towards the middle and the left of the periodic table. All right, so these are what we call properties. Metalloids are just to the right of the metals. These are elements with metallic and non-metallic characteristics. Right, these are the steps along the right side of the periodic table. Just really quick, these are here. Right, okay, those are what we call metalloids. Non-metals are generally gases or soft solids. And then you have the lanthanide series and the actinide series. These are the bottom of the periodic table. Right, uh, those are the inner transition metals. All right, other forms of the periodic table. Right, you have different forms, variations. Okay, there's a website you can look at an interactive periodic table. All right, uh, whoops. Okay, um, 
So understanding groups 1 and 2A, these fill the S sublevels. 3 through 8 fill the P sublevels. Groups 1 through 8B fill the D sublevels, and the lanthanide actinide series fill the F sublevels, all right, as we talked about in Chapter 4. All right, so moving on to periodic trends, our second part. The first trend is atomic radii, and I like to remember this one um, as the most important because it's the only one that is different by the other, as the other, from the other. I'm going to pause the, the lecture now, and um, I'll post the second half of the lecture uh, separately.